You're listening to The Nothing Podcast with Nobody Important, where a group of nobodies speak to an actual somebody. And now your hosts, John and Frank. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm John. I'm Frank. And you are listening to The Nothing Podcast. With Nobody Important. And Frank, let me tell you something. Oh, man. We got a weird one today. Oh, it's crazy. (laughs) So this week, we went out on location again. Yeah. To... Coney Island here in Brooklyn. The hub of Freak Show. Oh, yeah. It's where it's where Freak Show is. When I think about where it started. Yeah. I mean, it's not here, but I would think <laughs> that it's here. It's like close to here. Uh, yeah. yeah. I would say where I would wrongly assume that Freak Show started right. would be here in Coney Island. And we're here at the Freak Show. And we have today a guest who is so hot. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Literally. She breathes fire. She shoves nails in her face. She does other crazy stuff. She eats or ate bugs. She ate bugs. <laughs> she ate bugs. Um, and her name is Insectivora. Yeah. So the story behind this is that we came out uh, about a month and a half ago to see the freak show here in Coney Island, the, mm-hmm. the circus side show. And we said to ourselves, there is a woman in this show who is so entrancing she is. <laughs> that we, we had to reach out and see if we can get her as a guest. Yeah. Her act is badass, but she also seems very sweet and genuine and honest. Yeah. And yeah. so we got the chance to sit down with her, and we got to talk all things Coney Island and all all, all things weird and wild, as it were. <laughs> so sit back. Relax. Get your marshmallows out. Put your nails in your nose. Because here she is. Hello, I'm Insectivora from the Coney Island Circus Sideshow. I do fire eating, the human blockhead, and some of the inside talking. Yeah, 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 definitely. So, so uh, John and I, I think we were both a little nervous coming into this as not to say the wrong thing. Uh, yeah, right? totally. Because we were like, is oh, it a, I, it's I, not I'm a fine. freak show, because that sounds terrible. It sounds terrible. No, but we turned it into like a positive. Like, yes, we are the freak show. We even have t-shirts. Oh, it's called the Island Freak Show. Okay. And yeah. I love that. I so, love that. Yeah. But we were just saying, because... Uh, it's like all in also like tonage and facial expressions, yeah. you know, like, ah, you freak. Or, right. Oh, yeah, I'm a freak at the freak show. You know, like, I don't know. It's, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, uh, I guess we'll, we're, since we're going, I, I, I'm just going to right off the bat. Thank you for, for sitting down with us. Oh, my pleasure. And um, so to give a little background, of, mm-hmm. of, we told you before, but uh, so Frank and I and Danielle came to see the show a couple weeks back. And we saw you do your thing, and we just knew that we, we had We got to get this girl. Yeah. Oh, thank you. So I will say that I, I, I feel like a person meeting a celebrity going, remember me, remember me? Oh. However, <laughs> we were here at a show. Maybe this happens all the time, that you were going to do your fire eating, and they left the doors open and, like, the air conditioning on. Yeah. Oh, that happens to be all the oh, time. Oh, it does happen all the time. <laughs> that yeah. was her, right? We, yeah, because yeah, yeah. we were like, the professionalism that you showed was like, in the face of, oh, this fire is going to blow into my face. Yeah, I know. It was yeah. pretty amazing. Actually, uh, it just happened in the last show. Did it? Yeah. No. Someone <laughs> left, I guess, during the previous act, and they went out the exit they weren't supposed to, the one, the emergency exit down the hallway by the bathrooms, and that goes to the outside, and it was left open. And so I lit my torch, and I'm like, why is it so bright over there? Oh, that door is open. <laughs> and I'm like, I waved to the sound guy, like, ah. and then this door guy came. He's like, oh, sorry, anyway, close it. I'm like, okay, do it. Yeah, they know wow. what to do, though, at yeah, least. Yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, right, right, yeah. right. Because you can tell something's wrong. If it's a little windy, you could be screwed. Yeah, you need yeah, no wind. I need to know. Yeah, I don't like, like, I can do fire outside. I prefer not to. Like, oh, all of October, I'm going to be doing outside fire. Wow. But, um, I prefer not to, but then like the indoor show, like the tricks that I do indoors, like it has to be still. Right. Because when I bring my face down and I have the flame, oh, she just it, pointed oh. up her nose. Yeah. You well, no, with the flame like will going yeah, up be your face. right up yeah, right in there. front of my face, very close, and any breeze brings it in. It's like oh, so. Let's I don't want up. the blister on my. Uh, <laughs> let's 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 take a let's let's wind the clock back a bit. Okay. Yep. So. You eat fire, mm-hmm. among other things, here at the Coney Island Freak yes. Show. I, I, you get this question all the time, and I, eventually I'm going to ask you if you're tired of asking. <laughs> how does one yeah. start doing it? How does one discover I want to eat fire? Okay, well, the story of how I work here at the Coney Island Circus Sideshow is so 
different. Like I'm not, there's so many performers that they just dedicated their time. They either went to sideshow school or studied under some performer and they were like, yeah, I want to be a sideshow performer right, and that's right. what I want to do. It just kind of fell into my life. I am originally from Brooklyn. Yay! What part of Brooklyn? I was, well, okay, I was born in Kings County Community Hospital. Okay, okay. Lived in Brooklyn with my mother, I don't know, like young, very young. Then when I was around seven or eight, moved out to Suffolk County, Long Island. Got it. Grew up all oh, over wait, Long, no, Island. No, 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 Long no, Island. Long Island, I remember. <laughs> right. And then, um, oh, I, I was born in Kings County mm. Community Hospital, so I'm guessing Bushwick oh, area. Right. Hey, sound guy, you don't have a mic. <laughs> <laughs> Off the record. Off the record. <laughs> So then, um, but anyway, yeah, I think my mother was not the greatest person. So I ended up growing up all over right, all in over the, the foster place. care system. And uh, well, that's how I began to work here anyway. Mm. I was living, I moved away for a while. I was living in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I came back to New York to visit, you know, to see old friends and whatnot. So I'm staying with friends on the Lower East Side on like Avenue C over there. And a few days into my visit, September 11th happened. Oh, wow. It was lockdown, yeah. martial law. I couldn't leave the 14 block radius because I had the Minnesota ID. You had to have the New York ID to go in and out of right, the, right, the sure. um, military blockades. It was, it was a crazy time. Wow. So, you know, like, all right, well, I'm not coming. Everyone understood that I wasn't coming back to work in Minnesota because, oh, my goodness, that's crazy right. in you New like York. a regular job in Minnesota? I worked at a bookstore, and I worked at a group home for developmentally challenged adults. Oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Like you had I an would, important job. Yeah, it was wonderful. It was very, like, fulfilling because yeah. I got, you know, I took them to coffee. They loved the coffee shop down yeah. the street, so I'd hang out, and I'd protect them that's great. from, like, idiot people like, right. Us, like us. no 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 just people that would be mean to them of because course. they're developmentally yeah. challenged and so yeah we've gotten some people 86 from the coffee shop so yeah <laughs> but anyway so back to how i began working at the coney island sideshow so i was trapped in new york because of 9 11 you couldn't leave the city you couldn't come into the city i was stuck then finally the blockades are lifted airports are opened again and I'm going to go back to Minnesota. But I went to the Roseland Tattoo Convention three days before I was supposed to go back to Minnesota, where I met Dick Sigan, the proprietor of the Coney Island Sideshow. Mm. And at the time, I basically just had like my face and neck and hands tattooed. Okay. And he saw, he's like, you need to be in my show because your look is so strange. Usually people save the face and hands for last. And I'm like, I know, that's why I did them first. Listen, go for it, go for it, that's it. And I'm like, well, what show is that? He's like, the Coney Island Circus Art Show. And I'm like, I don't know how to do any of that stuff. And he was like, oh, you'll learn. And I was like, oh my goodness. And then I called everyone in Minnesota. No, I'm not coming back. I'm going to stay in New York and check this other job offer out. What? And That's then, wild. But yeah. you didn't have an act. I did not. And when I first started here, I ate live insects. <laughs> No. Oh, okay. Of course. That's oh, where the name comes from. Oh, wow. No <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Wait, live insects. Live okay. crickets. We got to open this box. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> had, had you ever done anything like that before? Um, Like, just like a party tricks, you okay. know, party jokes. You know, you're at a you party <laughs> and like grab a moth out of the air. Like, you know, like oh, sure. it was to freak we all do it. out, you know? know? Grab a bat, bite just, its head off. No, I didn't do that. Okay. But. That's wild. So, you so just, yeah, it, so I was that insectivore and that's, I know I'm stuck with it. I, I love to it. picture her sitting with this guy day one on the job at a desk being like, what can you do? And they're <laughs> thinking <laughs> it's a montage and she's like, I ate a bug once, and they're like, <laughs> yeah, that's no, it. You're in. <laughs> so what was your first professional bug that you ate, that you got paid for? Do you remember? Oh, oh no, well, I just, like... Whatever was there. <laughs> no, not whatever was there. I, you know, like, I would get the insect. You could buy yeah. insects yeah, sure. online at pet stores, bait shops, whatever. And, like, you get them, and, like, you just feed them certain fruits or vegetables so they taste like 
oh. the fruit or vegetable. Oh. So if you give them apples, if you give crickets apple slices, they're going to taste like apples. Really? You put night crawlers, the big Canadian no, night no, crawlers, no. and oatmeal, no, no. No. then all the dirt comes out but i would actually end up going back to just eating them with the dirt because the dirt was looked black and like blood yeah it looks <laughs> right it, it looks, looks better. better yeah 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 so yeah this is that <laughs> and but, while i was eating bug oh you had a question no i was just gonna say it, you know if you watch these travel shows most countries they're eating bugs it's just yeah. us that I mean, we're not eating bugs. you can it's you not can. like it's, it's just yeah, but yeah, they yeah, do yeah. it's totally protein, normal yeah, yeah it's protein that's wild so what else one question yeah desert island bug if you had one what? If you're on a desert and you had only one bug to choose from to eat, what would it yeah. be? It would have to be, um, oh, what were those little things? I mean, I feel like there's not an answer you're going to give that we're going to go, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, we like that one all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wax worms. She was just was mimicking it. eating it to try to remember oh, no, what I'm it like, was. Right on the tip of my tongue, oh, I do that. I, thought you, like, right like, the I thought you were trying to go back. Mm, uh, what was sense it? memory. Like, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. A wax worms. Worms. wax worms. Yeah. They were good. Wow. They were good. We're focusing a lot on this. I mean, I feel, it's But, great. I mean, this is – so I don't even know where to go next. So, so – Well, okay. So, okay, well, yeah. I know – where <laughs> hey, good, please take us, take us there. We're on the journey. So while I was eating the bugs the first year there, I was also um, started constructing my ladder of swords, which I don't have anymore. I sold it to a friend of mine. But yeah, so then I would walk up the ladder of swords on my bare feet. And a couple of guys who work on the dark ride down the road, the haunted spooky ride, oh, we love helped me yeah. build it. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so you would walk up at barefoot. I walk up, yeah, the barefoot ladder of swords. Then about three years in, the fire eater at the time put in his two weeks notice. And this I was is like, so oh, funny to me that it's like a real job. I like it's a want corporate. the fire eater position. Right, yes, you were, so you were. I went home those two weeks every night and I practiced and I put a little routine together to this like silly little surf song and... Then, because, oh, this other guy wanted to do it, too. And I was like, oh, I want it so bad. Listen, so I did. Got to fight for it. Then I did. And, well, then Dick Ziggin was like, after the two weeks, you know, it was the guy's last day. Yeah. He was like, all right, well, today's the audition. You both do your act in front of a live audience on the stage. Oh, wow. So the other guy, he went on first, and he was awful. And I was like, yes, I'm going to win this. I know it. So I went up. I did my awesome like little three minute thing and Zig Zig was like oh you got the fire you go. position and I was like yes and wow. then yeah so that's that a rough was... thing to be awful at yeah how, how, how are you bad you die <laughs> yeah. the... no like you could tell like he burnt himself as he put the toy like I guess no. he touched his nose and he's uh, like oh and then, and then he was like just he wasn't doing it to a song I think he was talking it or something oh, oh no to like, a monologue yeah <laughs> so how long ago was this Oh my goodness, it had to have been, well I started like right after September 11th, so that was like what, oh two, the spring right, right yeah, after, right. and so two, three, four, either oh four, oh five. Oh wow, so you've been here quite some time. Yeah, but I just came back, like I left for a few years, and then Jelly Boy the Clown, who's, it's so funny, he used to be 86 from here. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's in the show. One of the people who books the performers <laughs> to wow. work here. And he reached out to me while I was in Austin. I was living in Austin for the past five years. And he asked me if I would consider coming back. And I was like, yes. And I did. And so did you pursue eating fire and doing things like that in other places? So you said you moved out to Austin. Were you doing I it know. out there too? In Austin, I had like a, a grown-up job. Oh, okay. And it was Boring. awful. Yeah, nobody Yeah, I that. hated life. And I, because, well, when I left for the job, I was chasing money. I thought, oh, yeah, I want to make $45,000 a year sure. and have medical, dental, paid vacations and cheaper rent in Austin. But my life was miserable. It was awful. Yeah. So then... um yeah, I was like, yeah, I want to go back to being a starving artist. Way more fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what do you think this gives you here that fulfills you in a way that that didn't? Like here, performing is so great, especially in Coney Island. The audiences are so crazy diverse. There's every walk of life, 
every ethnicity, every religion, people who might not normally like each other or have something against somebody for something, but they're all sitting under the same roof laughing at my silly jokes or ooing and eyeing at my fire, and they're all having a good time together. And now I get weepy. Uh, yeah. and I'm like, <laughs> no, I don't mean, cry. Don't cry. It damages your fire image. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean that's something. I, listen, we're all performers, and it's it's the, you can't say enough about performing in front of a live audience and what what it what it gives you. Yeah. It's just so fulfilling. Like, and it you know. is. And sitting in front of a computer, tracking like oh. expensive lighting gear. I worked for a lighting design mm -hmm. firm. The owner is wonderful. I'm always welcome back there. And I'm grateful for the job that I had in Austin. But yeah, it was just really stressful. It's not the <laughs> artistic like, game. Uh, it's not, yeah. you know? I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, your look is very unique, right? This is, you would, no surprise. Um, We'll have a picture of her somewhere, right? Oh, yeah. How yeah, many yeah. tattoos do you have? Do, can you do know? I mean, you don't yeah, even know, right? I wouldn't even know. You have a ton. And then I wouldn't even know how to count them. If right. I they all kind of go into each other. Because, like, this was done in, like, Her different face. sessions. Right. Is that that? So is that one? Or is it one, two, three, four? So it's I, safe yeah. to say you have a lot. Yeah, I do um, have a lot. Super cool hair. <laughs> you got, like, the chopsticks going on. Yeah. You got, like, the two, like, Harajuku girl uh, mugs. Yeah, yeah. Right? You got this, like, sort of black what is this but the oh my god my and the, and my it's, I love it. it's I a love hood that. that's its own thing with that's not attached a, to her dress cowl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh it's great so you must get a lot of attention yes and no like sometimes people i don't know people are just so like i was saying earlier People's faces are in their phones like all the time. I don't think people even notice people <laughs> anymore. Like, but I guess back in the day before cell phones were so prevalent in our society, like, yeah, I would bring out like the love or hating people a lot. Some people like, oh, you look great. Some people like, oh, you look awful and you scare the children. I'm like, oh, whatever, you know, it's just. Uh. Yeah, but it's kind of like, a, I was thinking about it earlier today. It's, it's almost like a superhero in a way. Think about it. I mean, yeah. you've got an outfit that you could put together. You've got a look. You've got a name. You've I, got powers. You've got powers. <laughs> That's yeah, it's, true. it's really Fly like... Up and up. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> you podcast. Right. Right. Yeah, so these are all superhero is, things. Yeah, wonderful. It like is. the it's name good. alone is kind of cool. You can build a whole persona around and then when you want to, I guess. I mean, it's yeah. a little tougher like we were saying, but you can step away from it if you need to, the persona, yeah. for a little while and then step back into it. Yeah. That's very cool. So do you go by Insectivora for the most part, most places, or not really? Not really. Like, performing, and it's so funny, It's and it's been so weird. Like, some people are like, yeah, you need to stick with that brand, just always say you're Insectivora. Yeah. But then I feel weird, you know? I don't know. Because when you're at the I bank, it's like, oh, <laughs> what's on your debit card? Yeah, and what's, right. uh, what's the number, Insectivora, right. while we're here? <laughs> no, yeah, well, you're at the bank, and you're like, Insectivora, yeah, and like, yeah. All right, so what's your name, though? Are, yeah, <laughs> yeah. are you the best at Halloween? Right. Uh, are you the best? Am I the Cost best? What do you do? Oh, you know what I love at Halloween? When I see other people dress up as me. <gasps> oh, that's so cool. Danielle's Little about to cry. Kids, like, do it. Like, you have a similar vibe to Danielle. Women will send kids pictures on, like, Facebook. Well, I'm not on Facebook anymore because I think they're evil. <laughs> but um, Anyway, that's a tangent we're not going to go down. Thank you. Moving on. <laughs> we need them for this show. Moving I on. know. I feel bad, like I. But you know what? I'm on Instagram, and Facebook owns Instagram now. That's right. Everybody owns. Everybody. I'm table slapping. Forgive me. Nah, but, right. <laughs> but it's kind of cool that people. Dress but yeah, as like you. yeah, people be like people as kids, you know. And I'll get like pictures. People tag me like, oh, That's my so daughter, cool. it's you for Halloween. I'm like, oh, people who get my face tattooed on their body. I'm like, no, what? no, they don't. Oh, I'm still waiting for that. I have my right cell now. phone's downstairs, but yeah. Is it on your so Instagram? Cool. No, it's in later? my yes, definitely. Someone has your face tattooed on them. A few people, yeah. This guy in Australia has a huge, <laughs> a huge like calf, his calf muscle just covered with my face and like a tiger or something. And then this other guy has me really huge and like two or three other sideshow women across his back. You know, it's like his back is really big and he's got like my head. It's almost like a women of sideshow Mount Rushmore <laughs> like across his back. Wow. And my face is like the third one. Well, I'm like, Whoa, That's pretty cool. Isn't that awesome to have people like tattoo you on their body yeah. like strangers? Guess like what, Insectivora? Tommy, <laughs> show your ass. No, yeah. <laughs> when we first came to see the show and we left, Frank said, 
we were talking about you, and Frank was like, she's got a similar vibe in a weird way to Danielle. Yeah. And I don't oh. know why, what it is, I mean, <laughs> but uh, we were going to make Danielle come dressed as you today. And we decided oh, to I wish. I <laughs> I don't want to go you as you for Halloween. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's your vibe though. I think you're very just outgoing and you don't need me to tell you this, right? But you're just very like energetic and 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 magnetic, oh, right? And sweet and like, it's, yeah. I think that says something too about Coney Island and about the the sideshow in general. I mean, since we 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 came here and we set up and we we've been going around, especially this season of the show, we've been doing on location things that. You know, like we, we, we did like Broadway houses and we've done a couple of different places and everybody's so strict and st- about what you can do, what you can't do. Here it was like, set up, set up. Do you like, you need some chairs? Here's a table. Yeah, it was. So, and I, but I think, it's going to be noisy. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. But I think it just says something about Coney Island and, and as a whole and the field that's, that's here and why the sideshow continues on. There's just something so welcoming and open about it where it's just everybody's it's, I mean it goes back to circus right where everybody's so diverse right. and Everyone's like if, welcome if you can't right. go somewhere else you come here yeah. you know which I think is so cool and you carry that vibe with you very much oh, I, yeah. I feel thank you um, so what do you think of The Greatest Showman? <laughs> yeah, I thought about that. The movie The Greatest Showman with Hugh Jackman. Have you seen it? Oh, no. What? Oh, what? You got to. No, no. It's about, it's about the origins of... It's P.T. Is of, it P.T. Barnum? Is it? Yeah, yeah it's about the yes. origins yeah. of P.T. Barnum oh, and how he cool. found all of these people who... I mean, it's not super historically accurate. Yeah. He was like hurting animals and stuff. Yeah. But not in the movie. In the movie, they just sing and dance. And they... <laughs> <and> <laughs> And they, it's about how he finds all these disenfranchised Dis- people and brings yeah. brings them in. And it's, it's it's we thought about it immediately when we were downstairs watching the show. We were like wanting uh, to sing the music, and we knew that we'd get uh, kicked out. So. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to? Uh, should we do a rating game? Sure. Why not? Can we start with a rating game? Okay. Okay. Absolutely. So insectivore. This is something we do in every episode. Okay. Um, we have come up with a list of things we need you to rate. Now, okay. You might say, how do I rate it? And we say, we don't really care. Okay. In the past, <laughs> people have rated things. They've come up with uh, the equivalent in a disease. Was people one have version of rated in rate. diseases. In they've underwear. Rated they've rated in, in underwear. In underwear. <laughs> they've um, just given like it's, don't like it's, one out of tens, whatever it is. Okay. Well, this, this can be however you choose to express whether you like or dislike something. Okay. It could be a number. It could be I like it or hate it. Okay. Um, Got so, it. I think so. Yeah, it's confusing. I mean, yeah, I'm confused. Frank is made just rate it. Frank okay. loves to just be good. People like rate it in ones or ones high. He just goes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> because it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, you could rate it in face tattoos. One face okay. tattoo is I like it a little. Yeah. Uh, okay. Or if you give it a bunch Ten. of tattoos, oh. we like it. Okay. Okay, all right. So this episode's rating game is going to be based on Coney Island things. Okay. So we're just going to give you a list of Coney Island things. And you tell us how you feel about them. Frank, you want to start? Sure. Joey Chestnut. Do you know him? He's the guy who wins the hot dog eating contest oh, every year. every year. Yeah. yeah. What do you I think know. of this guy? He said it like it's a household name. Like, <laughs> I know. The guy, you know, we ate 75 hot dogs last year. Um, no. I don't. Uh, yeah, see, I'm not into hot dogs. Okay. <laughs> That's that's the opposite of him. So then we don't Excuse like Excuse me, for the record, okay. ten years ago you were eating bugs. So <laughs> let's so back back the horse up. A but I here. know exactly. And that bug was the pure source. You don't know what's in hot dogs. I, I, I that is the bugs best in hot point. Dogs. What is that is the best point. I agree. That's right. What is mechanically separated chicken? No right. As opposed to separated by your bare hands. Yeah. <laughs> and then I picture a Viking like somebody on a conveyor belt pushing a button. The chicken gets torn apart. We don't like that. So Joey okay. Chestnut, get out of here. You didn't answer our Instagram. Oh, but I guess he's a nice guy. I don't know. Actually, I don't know him. I, I don't we, know. we tried. Oh, okay. We tried to get him, and he didn't answer us. But you oh, answered us. So, so okay. forget him. Zero tattoos for you. That's right. <laughs> um, what do we think about like knockoff T-shirts and things that people are selling in these like uh, little stores over here, like really cheap, cheaply made stuff? Eh. That's how uh, I feel. Yeah. Uh, Whatever. Got to make a dime. Exactly. Yeah. yeah they have three tattoos. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Coney Island summed up as the smell of gasoline, dog shit, and French fries. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> no. So you don't have to like it. <laughs> no, that's zero tattoos. Zero. zero tattoos. So you're a Coney Island lover, because now yeah, we, we grew up in Brooklyn. Col- There's two Coney ways to Island. be. There's Coney Island lover or Coney Island. 
We go there, but yeah. Yeah. But you're a lover of Coney Island. I do. I yeah. love Coney Island. That's great. That's the best yeah. way to be. I wish I was more that way. I'm not so much the other way, but I'm a little on the fence sometimes. I'll yeah. be like, eh, I don't want to go yeah. to Coney Island. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. What about the price of the cyclone? The, the ride. Oh, that's, yeah, it's a little <laughs> much now. For a ride that could potentially kill you. <laughs> <laughs> it is my favorite roller coaster in the universe. But yeah, they, uh, but you know, to the upkeep, yeah. because it's so old. Yeah, it's wood, right? They it's need, wood. Yeah, yep. and they need to constantly maintain it, which costs money. And then we're in New York and yeah. everything just keeps getting more and more expensive. And tourists are so going to keep going there. Get so. it. Yeah. 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 I just, I miss the days when you rode the cyclone and then you could get off, like you could stay on and just give them like $5 yep. and st- like uh, for each additional ride. Yep. You didn't have to pay like the full $10 or what it was just then you paid the 10 and then five, five, five as many times as you wanted to yeah. ride it. And then because I worked at the sideshow, some of the people sometimes would just let me go oh. for free. Well, you're, and yeah, those, you're great those, advertising. And then now yeah, right. no more. Now you have to leave, go through the turnstile, go back through oh, wow. like you can't just go back on i didn't know that it's the only roller coaster i've ever been on yeah i won't go on the new ones that look so no, scary no. the loops the loops thunderbolt over here did you do that that's a no right? oh yeah but that's the a new one, one. yeah, yeah it's a new no, one yeah no, no that's no. too scary i don't like those big fast ones no so right. we so we don't like the price of the cyclone but we like no, the cyclone. we love I the cyclone she's gonna say about the next one okay go ahead I just want to say it at this point. <laughs> Syringes on the beach. <laughs> oh, zero zero. zero. There's, There's a lot of them out here, though. Come on. They're yeah. There. They well, there. yeah, there was... Mommy, what's in my sandcastle? Mm-hmm. Walking Coney Island. <laughs> it's the spire on the top. What do you mean? But you know what? The... Also, years ago, I don't remember... Oh, I guess, yeah, it was around, like, right after September 11th. There was, like, battleships out in our yeah. ocean port waters whatever and yeah one like they would some it, that's where the syringes came from oh wow they had a mishap huh. and all of their freaking medical that's, that's, that's waste washed up wow. on wow. the shore that's yeah crazy. and then there was just yeah hazard warnings i'm gonna piggyback off that one and i'm gonna jump the list a little bit and i'm gonna say i don't know if you ever heard of this um i'm gonna say coney island whitefish have you heard of that <laughs> I almost destroyed this microphone. There it is. <laughs> we don't like that either. We don't no, like those either. We don't like those. We're no. not a big fan. Zero tattoo. Zero tattoo. Negative tattoo. Yes. Negative tattoo. Yes. Tattoo removal. Right. Uh, that was the best one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, um, oh, I'm about oh. to snap first. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't touch them. Ah. Jesus. The Coney Island Whitefish Museum here. At yes. no. Yeah, okay. No. <laughs> God. Oh. Okay, ready? Aggressive pigeons. Oh, I don't. <laughs> this, I don't like. I've never experienced an aggressive pigeon. I wouldn't like one though. Yeah. No. So zero I, tattoos. Zero for tattoos. The aggress- We're getting no <laughs> but tattoos here. This makes me think of. Oh my goodness, those YouTube videos where they would. Feed seagulls. Oh, the, oh like the, the X-Lax? The X-Lax. And they yeah. shit all and over the, the beach. And all yeah. over the beach. You see people just like, ah! I'm surprised that doesn't happen more often around here. I'm not going to lie to you. Because it's funny. And it, yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. So this is a general question we had for you. If a place in Coney Island served sushi, would you eat it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. See, she trusts Coney Island. We, we all asked that question and went, We get sushi delivered not. all the time from, like, not too far oh, away. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, what are, they, they can't be on the boardwalk. If no, sushi, they're not on the, on the board. boardwalk. I'm not. Whitefish roll. Okay. <laughs> Whitefish at the Coney Island Whitefish <laughs> This is more of a question. It's a little chewy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Anyway, <laughs> okay. I love that we're never we're not gonna explain it, and people listening to look this are up. gonna they're Google like, it and they're gonna find it. Don't look it up at work or with your kids. <laughs> My son loves aquariums. <laughs> okay, ready? Uh, Brooklyn Cyclones, real sports team? 
Yes! Oh. There you go. That's right. You just blew the sound fan. guy's ears out. Yes. Uh -huh. I'm okay. Sandy the Seagull. Oh, God. Yes, yes Sandy, Sandy the Seagull. The yeah. t-shirt toss. Yeah, we love... We actually know one of the yeah. dancers. Yes, we do. We, we know, do. We know the dancer. And we know one of the heads of the team. Oh, like, right. Yeah. Years ago, yeah, on the side show, we used to, like, sometimes do, like, halftime shows. I so love that. Like, yeah. See, that's integration. We, oh, I got to ask that's them if so we could cool. do that again. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got one. <laughs> so you might not even know about this. Uh, have you ever heard of Gargiulio's? Yes. You know Gargiulio's? I've never. I want to go. It's so good. I My friend's father's it. the owner. It's delicious. People have weddings there. Yeah. Nice big Italian weddings. We like those weddings. That's a yes. Yeah, I like. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Nice I big Italian wedding. I want to be invited wedding. to one. Right here in Coney Island. You guys are gonna get married now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I got a friend who's having a wedding at Gargiulio's. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, make it happen. <laughs> Insectivora is my plus one. Yay! 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 Don't tell my wife! Okay. Uh, uh, okay, this is about Coney Island. What do you think about people telling you how it used to be? Um, oh, but I'm one of those people. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> We used to have this bar next door to the sideshow. Like, oh, I have a story. Oh, do a tell Co it. An old Coney story. Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> there used to be this diner. I think it's where Popeye's is now okay. on surf. It was in that vicinity called Nick's Greasy Spoon. Oh. And I loved that. Oh, no, it was Nick's Diner. We called it Nick's Greasy Spoon. Right. That's <laughs> terrible advertising, Nick. <laughs> I much prefer okay. that. Nick's I future know, diarrhea. <laughs> okay. So, and we would get our like egg sandwiches there every morning before work. Even though sometimes there'd be the eggshell in there. Like, yeah, yeah <laughs> pick it up. <laughs> but, uh, all right. Mix. So now upstairs was apartments and this Big in the punk rock days, he was a record producer of a bunch of punk rock albums. And he had an apartment on the top floor of that building. So one day, I don't know, Nick's diner, Nick apparently, I guess, owed money to, he had gambling debts. Mm -hmm. So one day we go in there, Nick is working behind the counter and we hear from the guy upstairs that yeah, Nick lost his diner and now he just works behind the counter. Oh, We're like, no, no way. So now a couple of months after that, and then we felt bad we'd seen Nick and be like, oh. So then a couple of months after that, it's all shuttered up. And then our friend of the sideshow, the guy who lived upstairs, the punk rock record guy, was like, oh, you're not gonna believe this. So the landlord of the building gets this like $7,000 electric bill. And apparently it was like, there's no way the hallway lighting is $7,000. Sure. Right, right, sure. So the people that Forced. Now forced Nick out, and they had hooked up all of the diner power to the hallway power, <laughs> and it was so hot they said you could fry an egg on it. So then the Con Ed comes in, shuts it all down. Then the people who took over Nick's diner came back and put generators to keep the refrigerator going but generators gasoline powered generators <laughs> in a sealed oh, roll gate oh down no. diner so then the the punk rock record guy's like he's like i woke up and i was like i felt lightheaded i thought i was gonna pass out oh. and then we're like oh is that gas i smell and then yeah and then realized like yeah there was like gas fumes oh, all no. throughout the no blow thank goodness and so then, yeah, they came, the, I guess, police or something came in, got the generators That's out. Wild. And then we never saw Nick ever again. And I hope he's not sleeping oh, with the fish. No. <laughs> you know, Insectivora, we don't usually do this, but here he is. It's oh, Nick! That's crazy. He's fine. Well, that's he's fine. That's sort of the. Here's your egg sandwich with the yeah, left of shells in it. But that's the history of, that's uh, unfortunately a lot of the history of Coney Island is 
people disappearing yeah. and you know but you know Coney Island does have a lot of really rich deep history it, it's when when people come to see a landmark of Brooklyn they come here yeah. and so how does it feel to have been born in Brooklyn even though you've moved around yeah. you're inherently Brooklyn and to now be a part of like Brooklyn history legacy I know it's kind of neat because I think like oh maybe like a hundred years from now people will be like oh like come up here and they'll be like oh insectivora yeah, like, yeah. Oh, sure. she looks cool like, absolutely yeah. that's yeah. very cool no I mean just just the fact that it's so what you guys do here at the uh, the sideshow is so inherently unique it's like a little magic it's a little performance art mm -hmm. it's a little like comedy comedy <laughs> right it's kind of it's a little edgy burlesque -y a little bit like it it's all... also like rough around the edges which yeah. is great like when you go yeah. in there That's it's like I, like I don't know it. the last yeah. time they mopped this floor but <laughs> right I'm absolutely right? so now you guys said you, you I think you mentioned last time that there are there were like adult specific shows like later in the, yeah, in the evenings. Yeah, 18 and over. Yeah, the burlesque shows on Fridays and Saturdays. Sometimes there's burlesque shows on Thursday nights. And then there's other shows on Thursday nights. Like the 29th is Music of Curiosities. Mm. It's live bands are going to be playing. That's 18 wow. and over. Are you in it? I, yeah, it's my birthday. So, oh, yes, I will. When is it? August 29th, not That's this Thursday. That's my birthday. <gasps> Oh, oh my God. And Michael Jackson. And Michael Jackson. That's <laughs> right. Wow. And our friend Susan. That's all true. Oh, Susan right. Jasper. We should take you to get the uh, ta face tattoos. Ah. For your birthday. <laughs> no. <laughs> Same birthday. That's wild. So, so you guys do like the. Are we what? <laughs> what ha I've never been to a burlesque show. What happens at the burlesque shows? Have you been? Oh, it's like well, I don't know. At a Coney Island burlesque uh, show uh, in Vegas, maybe I could guess. I don't yeah. know. Um, it's it's like strip tease, you know. Some of it's funny. There, I like the comedy ladies right, say, that do the, the co funny. comical strip tease. Yeah. Then there's you know the serious like fancy ones. Mm. And then there's ones that like are kind of scary. Yeah, <laughs> you know, they got really? all the fake blood and a, but no, yeah. But yeah. This one the other night, Saturday night, I I guess they had a big like horror burlesque. And I come in the next day, you know, because I work on Sundays, and so yeah, yesterday as a matter of fact. So I come into work, and in front of um, my fire fuel cabinet is this tarp just filled with fake blood oh and I'm God. like uh, oh, another so day at the like, office pick it up and I brought I threw it in the shower and I told the manager I'm like there is a tarp full of sticky fake blood in the shower I hope it's fake yeah, that might have been is, Nick no no not Nick <laughs> but it, anything that that happens here any kind of show be it burlesque be it uh, the the sideshow it's all so vaudevillian in a way that like that's what I meant when I was like yeah. what kind of uh, burlesque is here because it's sort of like Gypsy Rose Lee burlesque and it's not gonna be like in Vegas you go it's gonna be kind of strippers being oh, oh a little oh. teasy <laughs> here you got the red curtain I mean you got yeah, the curtain yeah, it yeah. is it's vaudeville yeah. Yeah. here even still even the the, the humor uh, in the sideshow is very it's 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 Old accessible. It, yes, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's classic. It's, though. it's classic. It's accessible. Yeah. It's silly, but it doesn't talk down to you. It's clever. Yeah, yeah. and it, it's a real like blast from the past, which is I think why the sideshow is still so respected yeah. here in yeah. Coney Island. Have you found as they try to update Coney Island and and quote unquote clean it up mm -hmm. with Keyspan Park and the new rides and things like that? Do you, is there any fear around here that it's going to start to encroach on, on this area or there's a good working relationship? I kind of feel like maybe it's already starting. We were just talking about this the other day, me and another Coney Island friend, how the more they build it, they're now building like fancier apartment buildings right, a yeah. few blocks in. And it's like the more they build here, like the less people actually come to Coney Island. Right. Like, why yeah. is that? You, we were hoping that, yeah, they because oh my God, Thor Equities when they bought out all the properties and they wanted to turn it into condos, then the city is like, no, you can't. Everything's zoned for amusement. You can't just come in and change the zoning. So thank then God. they're like, fine. <laughs> then they just let the properties sit and rot. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah. no. Because nobody and wants then to so, come. Yeah. yeah. 
and so yeah there was that and uh just i i don't know i hope coney still flourishes where is it right now in terms of just if you look like laterally across the years like is it thriving now or i feel like when they made everything they made the steeplechase they made it look like the old one it, it's cool yeah but i I mean, it looks like it is. It appears. I'm just going by where like, the sideshow here. Right, what you yeah, see, what you my see in the bubble. Audience. Yeah, and so I think. I mean, I hope it's it's just gonna keep growing and that people will still continue to come and not just be like, oh, now it's too fancy, too expensive, or too this or too that. There's an Applebee's. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's always a sign. <laughs> it's a of different the time. vibe, right? Yeah, but. Do you find that, you know, it's it's an amusement park, and so that, that means yeah. kids a lot of the time. Do you find that parents are hesitant to bring their kids into the sideshow? Some are, I'm sure. I mean, I know I was always afraid of it. overprotective <laughs> parents, and then there's, yeah, then the kids themselves, they might be like, I don't want to go in there. Yeah. I didn't know what I was going to say. He dragged me in here. Aww. And Danielle didn't want to come. Aww. I actually didn't want to come because I was worried that it was offensive. Aww. Like I swear, I was like, I oh, no. don't feel oh. comfortable laughing oh, at my someone. Gotcha. Oh, and I, I wish you, did you get to see Cuckoo the Bird Girl? No. I saw her. The, yes. I've okay. Her. Because Love she her. has a wonderful, her act, part of it, she talks about how in the past, like, yes, it was offensive and awful and not great for natural born freaks. And then now how their sideshow royalty and That's awesome. everything's they're treated very well. No, I'm no, so happy good, that yeah. I'm so happy that we got to come and see Yay. it because it was amazing. Yeah, Cuckoo just left today back to Australia. She, she was, was super cute. She was, oh, yeah. I love her. But she's sort of owning her, um, her, condition yeah that's a, that's that's a pc way to say it yeah. right she was born in a certain way yeah and then she's her act honors a performer from, from like the i don't know the, the 30s who had the same yeah. condition and she wears like a replica costume who was in the movie freaks yeah okay right cuckoo yep. the bird girl cuckoo this the is bird that, girl. that was the name yeah. of that, that performer uh -huh. right? exactly and uh they you know they look very similar if there was there's a picture of cuckoo the bird girl i think in that display case and i saw it and i said oh shit it looks exactly like yep. her right um, there was a guy here a couple of years ago, Velvet Crayon. I know Velvet. Wow, right? Yeah. Super cool guy. So this guy, he's a musician. Yes. And I, I don't know how he was born, but he's in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And he's small. He's a very small guy. Yeah. And he did his act and he played music and that was that. And then he rolled to the front of the stage and it was a pretty full house. This is like two years ago. Yeah. And he said, so this is me. I was born with this condition and it's very noticeable. He goes, ask me anything. That was it. That was most of the act. And people were first like, oh, what's your favorite song? And then the questions got deep. Yeah. And it was they always do. It was breathtaking. Yeah. Because you would never ask anybody. How do you go to the bathroom? Yeah. How do you? He said yeah. nothing is this off limits. Is, yeah. He He's a regular dude. He's like, ask me anything. And it, yeah. And it's uh, so see, great. I, I, I would, Brilliant. I would I love, love to see it, but I, I don't know if I'd partake in it. I just it feel was, like yeah. I don't know. It was very affirming. <laughs> yeah, At sure. the end of the day, you left. You were like, yeah, cool. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, I think... Part of the whole thing is you leave here going like, no, nah, this is cool. It's real cool what goes on here. And you come in going, ah, I don't know. I don't know. And like, oh, yeah. like the jokes are so bad. Yeah. They're good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, and they're, they're like, whoa, did you see the sword that person swallowed? Oh, she was playing with fire. And this one is doing that. It's cool. You know? Yeah, it's fun. Can we go back a bunch of years? I want to know the first time you tried to eat fire. First time in your house, you picked up the thing and you were staring at it. Actually, How'd no, that go? it was here. In the, so years ago... We used to like have little camp out sleepovers, like some of us performers on the state. We're not allowed to do that anymore. <laughs> but yeah, so me and like some of the performers, we would just hang out, we'd get sleeping bags and we'd sleep on the stage and just like have, you know, fun teaching each other stuff. So we had this girl, Sahar from Phoenix, Arizona, and she was um, doing fire there but she taught me the basics here it took me like a whole night just to be able to stick the first torch in I mean, my that's mouth pretty damn because good. you nothing. feel oh, the whole night you eat feel fire. The, the heat and your just mental capacity is like no that's hot do not put that near your face sure. 
So you're just like, oh, then I finally got over the fear and I just did it. And then it's funny, she saw me perform then years later. She's like, whoa, what you do with fire now is insane. <laughs> what's, what's your biggest thing that you do? What's your like? Um, oh, I just, my, they're called the vapor lock retentions. When I hold the fire out of my mouth for really long times, you know, like I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it's like you're it to fire. people. It's breathing fire. It just keeps yeah. coming out of your mouth. Yeah, but it's not the fire bring when you put the fuel in your mouth and you spit the fireball. Like, right. It's not right. like it's like the consistent the coming out yeah. of your mouth. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like, and also with the fire eating, I get some other like side film work once in a while. Sometimes it's really awesome. Like I get to blow a fireball in someone's music video or whatever. But sometimes I get it's not anything showing me at all whatsoever, but they use my fire breath. Cause I don't know if you've ever, you saw the show. I take the torches away and then I just continue yeah, to have that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Almost like when you light a can of hairspray. Yeah, 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 right. So years ago, um, some of the commercials for Game of Thrones, they had this dragon that was like, their, it was the commercial, it wasn't for any of the actual show, but the commercial, this dragon would fly in, in front of people's like apartment windows and land and then like blow a fire blast and they'd be like laying in bed like, ooh, and th that was my fire that those dragons. Get the hell out of here right now. So and cool. filming that was so cool because I had to be, I had to blow it. It was like a black like wall almost and then they cut a little hole because they just wanted they didn't want to do CGI fire. Right. Because he for the director felt it looked too fake. He right. wanted to use real fire. So it was about the size of the screen and I would have to sit and blow fire through this small hole and it was the weirdest thing. Is that, is that dangerous to have to do it with a... No, no, no it wasn't. Everything was flame resistant right, right. and flame that retardant. So cool. I know. No, the and Game I mean, of Thrones and then I was fire. Watch, and then like, I'd watch those commercials and be like, oh, that fire out of the dragon, that's me, that's my fire. That's <laughs> Yeah, your spit is in there and everything. Yeah. I imagine, That's cool. I imagine for a lot of film and TV projects, it comes in handy. Like, I remember, I could think of, like, five things that I watch where they pass through yeah. it, and there's a person See, blowing I'm the fire. I'm new back right. in town, so, yeah, I got to get back into the Yeah, yeah, you got to get roster. out there. Now we're going to keep an eye on it. Anytime I see yeah. a, a fire blower, I'm be like, uh, oh, oh, I think that's, I think that's her. <laughs> I, think I know her breath. I know. <laughs> cool. It's very cool. So I know we mentioned it very briefly before, but when we came in, Frank described the whole thing to me as the freak show, mm -hmm. which I know we don't call it anymore. We like you said, and it's not, but it's, you don't find it offensive. No. But they call it the freak show here. Do they still yeah, call it the freak show? Call, like I said, and they have T-shirts. Yeah, all right. But, so show. you guys have owned it. Yeah. You own that. Yeah. Um, but you, you can't turn that off because it's tattooed on you, it's, it's there, yeah. right? Yeah, I have tattoos all the time, yeah. but they don't come off. <laughs> right, right, right. But I don't want to get too much into it because I'm yeah. sure you answer the questions all the time, but where did the decision come in to say, I love this, I'm going to do these, I want these tattoos, and I'm, I'm committed to it? Because if that's your choosing. Yeah. I, you know, you're, I got them when I was living in Minnesota. I was in a band. And the drummer had tattooed his own face in a mirror. And I was like, oh, that's so awesome. I want to get, I want you to do my face because you're so good at it. Right. And then, so yeah. I but got it was my all backwards because he did it in a mirror and he didn't realize right. it. Yeah. And then he moved away. Yeah. <laughs> I was right in Deborah. Uh, you know? <laughs> no, but in doing that, in making that decision, right, yeah. you've chosen that your life is going to be Different. yours. Yeah. It's going to be what you want it to be and nobody's going to tell you otherwise, yeah. which is something I think is so cool about that. Like, it's Well, it's only because the way I grew up like I don't have the mother or the father to be like oh please don't do that you know like right. I grew up in foster homes and group homes so I basically raised myself and I didn't I don't have family that would get upset or but it's concerned kind of, but or you know so it, it's, it's yeah it's it sounds weird to 
spin it so positively, but yeah. I imagine it's kind of freeing where it's like, I can do me. Yeah. I'm going to do me and there's nobody going to tell me not to. Yeah. Which I think is kind yeah. of what this whole thing's about. And you found your tribe. Yeah. So right? It's, it's very, it's almost, I was thinking about it before when you were saying you have the sleepovers. It's almost like, or you used to have the sleepovers. Yeah. It's almost like you get the best parts of that family 1940s traveling circus box cars. Yeah. Only you get to like actually live in a, in a house and not have to live in a place <laughs> yeah. and not have to move. <laughs> but it's got that same kind of vibe, the way you're describing it at yeah. least. Is, it's kind of that, that family circus, not family circus. The cartoon. Not, family. not family circus from the newspapers, <laughs> but family, family circus vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, here's a, this is a totally different angle now. Mm-hmm. Um, you... You're incredibly warm. We don't even know you, but I can tell you're incredibly warm, not just because you, you eat fire. Thank but you. I'll, yeah. be here. I'll be here all week. But no. I'm bummed. You're incredibly warm. You worked uh, in, your, in your past life with special needs people. Yeah. Um, you're, you, you, to me, sound like a preschool teacher in Aww. your vibe. <laughs> Thank you, you, I'm assuming, had it rough somewhat growing up because yeah, of what you've said. What would you tell kids? That's my question. Um... Like if they want to do something, I don't. Yeah, I wouldn't even know what advice to give children. I don't know because I don't want to. No kids listen to this. It's fine. <laughs> You're not going to screw anybody no, up. But I, but I, it's like the bar said. I think what Frank's trying to say school, is though, yeah. no. I think what, what Frank is trying to say is that it, 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 we don't even need to hear what the advice would be. I feel like we we both in the last hour or so of knowing you feel like we know it would be good advice yeah you know yeah like i wouldn't know what you know, uh, see uh, even uh, the uh, fact uh, that you can't uh, say it <laughs> means that's how honest that's how genuine you are <laughs> you care about your answer uh, yeah matters. i don't i wouldn't know really like what to say because you just don't know how people take things you know yeah. i don't know like if i want to say follow your dreams what if their dream is to do something <laughs> awful and I'm like, uh, i want to collect <laughs> coney island whitefish <laughs> No. But now you, what you don't know is that Frank yeah. is a guidance counselor. So I am. good thing you didn't answer. You would have really judged it uh, because he <laughs> knows all about advice for kids. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's very true. But I will say this: like sometimes, you know, parents have like their preteen, teen kids come in, and you know, we talk and during the intermission, and they're like, "Oh, how do you do that? I want to learn how to do." <laughs> do that with the fire or the sword swell or whatever and I'll be like listen you graduate high school with really good grades I'll teach you how to do it that's the advice see there was the advice that's the right answer so I, last thing I want to close out with is that we always play a little a little game and now this one's kind of putting you on the spot so we'll help you with it okay we'll help you with it what we want to do is um you have a cool name okay that goes with your persona John isn't the coolest name. No. Frank's all right. Not. Danielle's cool, but, and Tom, is, he's tree frog, so we know that. <laughs> um, so we want to know, what do you think our, what, help us come up with persona names. Perso- Just by oh, looking at us, you know I us just, for an hour. I have, like, like, you could look at me. Like, I can't do that. We're all wearing glasses. Uh, we can uh-huh. like bottles. I had an idea, but I kind of was leaning towards something cool, like the great, like, like Chobani the Great or something <laughs> like that. I was thinking about the yogurt, the yogurt man. The yogurt, yogurt man. That's right. <laughs> no, but like I don't know. I, what oh, I know. I know how to inspire this. Okay. okay. So yeah, I don't know how to come up with other people's names. It took me so long to figure out what to <laughs> do it myself. <laughs> and, and it was what you ate. Right. It's not that. Im- yeah, I ate Nathan's a minute ago. More, like yeah, and I had to think like what would I do? Right. Yours lent like, itself to it. <laughs> yeah. It's like oh, I mean bugs, insects. Oh, a more like name. make it. You know. <laughs> That's great. So you're you're a sideshow performer. I've mm-hmm. been fascinated since I was a little kid with magic. Okay. Huge. This is I. Oh, I, I, I can do magic. I'm going to show you a magic trick. Yeah. Okay. But I want to say this. This is how I made friends in elementary school. This was like I was obsessed. Christmas, my birthday, we'd go to the magic store in the city. I'd buy tricks. This was everything. I Yay. taped David Copperfield on TV. I'd watch it on repeat. I tried to figure it out. I was obsessed. Can I? Yeah, yeah, of course. You- so Sundays, there's a magic show up here in the museum. You want to plug it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, go for it. Magic at Coney oh. every Sunday up in the museum at 12 noon. 12 noon. Well, till the end of summer. When do, when do you guys close the season? Um, well, running the sideshow seven days a week still till the end of August. 
Then in September, we're only open on Saturdays and Sundays, but the third weekend of September, there's no sideshow because it's the Coney Island Film Festival. We have oh. our very own film festival here as well. That's amazing. Yeah, it's wonderful. Love to check that so, out. So yeah, and to learn about all the wonderful programs, you can go to ConeyIsland.com. There you go. What a voice. Okay, That's look at my plug. look enough. Look at my magic trick. Yeah. Okay. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. Plug. I'm gonna try to do this with a microphone and a mic stand between my okay. legs. Okay. Okay. This is my wedding ring. March. Okay. Wow. What do you think? That's wonderful. Tell me about it. Frank. Tell the audience how good that was. Yeah, Frank. that was so good. <laughs> Frank, go ahead. He made the ring disappear through the table into his hand under what, the table. Do you think I could work here now? <laughs> oh wait, oh what was that old thing we would say? Um we're going to whirl you away to the land of mirth, magic, prestidigitation, digitation, capable sleight of hand, le jour de mange and necromancy. Uh, that's necromancy, isn't that what you, what's that's necromancy? That's when you raise you can raise, you raise like the dead. The dead wow. yeah. Who said that? Oh god, oh, I don't so remember. Good. That was an old sideshow talkers thing. <laughs> I love that. Amazing. So that's what that just trick just remind me of. Do you have like, a trick? I do, but it's I can't. It takes setup. I take I do this. It's this magic butterfly. You know the snowstorm magic. Sure, I do. Of course, yeah. So I do it with butterflies, paper butterflies. Paper butterflies. Yeah. So what butterfly. she's referring to is you take. Danielle's dying. She's you, like, I need to see that immediately. You, you wad something <laughs> up in your hand and you wet it. it usually it gets yeah, wet, so right? Yeah. So like yeah. Well, I come out first. I take. I have. I make two paper butterflies dance together with a fan, like a hand. A Japanese hand fan, mm -hmm. and well, I have two of them. So I make the two butterflies dance. Then I let them land back on the fake flowers on my magic table. Then I take up like the long tissue paper right. that you would use to fold, like wrap Christmas present, like the sweater grandma would wrap it in that paper. Yeah. Like, so I take it's that type paper. of paper and like tear it into strips, put it in the bowl of water, wring it out, fling some of the water into the audience. <laughs> fan it, you know, with the fan a little bit, then take it and go to throw it, but then it's dry streamers, and then I pull those back in, stick those in the water, and then wet it, you know, fling the water at the audience, fan that, but then as I'm fanning it, all these butterflies of snowstorm come out. Wow. Come out of your hand. Yeah, from my yeah, hand. Yeah, that's, like, that's a classic I love magic, that, right? yeah. It's as if we saw it. Now, being insectivore, you ever look at those paper butterflies and say, it's looking good? <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's, That's funny. funny. Well, uh, I think we should wrap up. And I think we, uh, I, I, I think I speak for all of us when I say that this was really great. Oh, oh yeah. thank you. Really do you want, you want so to shout out your fun. Instagram? Yeah, we want to, yeah, shout out your Instagram. Oh, yeah. Everything. Insectivora Angelica. Just look for the one with the tattooed face. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, you can't I doubt miss there's her. more than one no, under that hashtag, <laughs> under that, uh, under that uh, handle. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you said www.coneyisland. Oh, yeah, coneyisland.com. Oh, wow, and you can just go straight, straight to the, there. Yeah, there it'll go. take you to Coney Island, USA, like the things that happen. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, guys. This I, was so much fun. Yeah, I really Yay. appreciate it. And we're going to come back and see you in all various forms of Coney Island Sideshow. Yay. Ladies and gentlemen, Insectivore. Yay. Yay. <laughs> You've been listening to the Nothing Podcast with Nobody Important, a cool side production hosted by John Penapinto and Frank Coyote with contributors Matt Hunt, Joe Hogopian, and me, Danielle Rose Fisher, and engineered by Tom Zaccheo. Find us online at nothing-podcast.com. And be sure to rate and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever fine podcasts are distributed. 